we have to start establishing that this is our place. From here on out. Hey, this is what we play for. We're better safe than them. Let's go. 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 Welcome to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Buteau alongside the head coach of your GC Lopes, Dan Marley. And we uh, recap the last four games for the Lopes, and they went 3-1 and one during that span. A big win at Chicago State. It was a blustery night in Chicago. A couple of NBA players out there, Markinen and, and Jordan Bell were out there. Uh, they were playing? Were they? Really? Oh, wow. It would have been quite the show if they had some eligibility left, but they were there to help out uh, Fifi Adu and Casey Benson to show up for their their countrymen and their, their former teammate at Oregon. Yeah, it was good. Uh, we've had struggles at Chicago State. I thought we went out and played extremely well. Um, first half, second half. I uh, thought everybody did a good job, and it was nice to have those two guys. It just tells you what kind of people Fifi and, uh, and Casey are for them to, to, especially on a night off. You know, I've been an NBA player, and I understand that the night offs are a premium. And the last thing you usually want to do is go watch a, a college basketball game. So, uh, you know, big shout out to those guys and to show you uh, what kind of teammates uh, Fifi and, and Casey are. Well, Roberts Blumberg's had 25 for that GCU Division One freshman mark against UTRGV, but it was the start of the Alessandro Labor show because he topped it at 28 in that game. Yeah, you know, we've done a good job of throwing the ball into Ollie. We really wanted to take care of some mismatches. You know, he's got great size and good touch down there, and he's a good passer. So. Uh, we've really started to concentrate, not just with uh, with Ali, but with Rob and everybody else of, of taking care of mismatches and using their size and throwing the ball inside, and uh, we've done a good job of that of late. And then it was on to uh, UMKC, an 86-69 win, improved to 14-6 and overall, hit 50% from the field. Well, again, it was going inside. Yep. Uh, Ali did a great job. Guys did a good job of taking care of it. They played a lot of uh, small ball. At times, they had five guards on the floor. so. Uh, it's a tough for us to have to guard them with our bigs. So uh, if we don't do a good job on the offensive end of taking you know, care of our size mismatch and throwing the ball inside, then we're doing a, a disservice. We might, as well, we might as well go small. So I thought we did a really good job, especially at the end of icing the game with throwing the ball in the alley. Yeah, he followed up his 28 performance night with 24 in the game against the Roos. Yeah, Just he, taking advantage once again. Yeah, like I said, they got mismatches. a small lineup and as you know, they're making him guard a small. So. Uh, if we don't make them guard a big down on the other side inside, then you know I'm not doing my job. And if you look at the score sheet, Oscar Freire at 14 points, nine rebounds in the game. You're, you're well, he's just got to stay active, uh, rebound. Uh, when he shoots the ball, he's going to score well, but uh, he's got to just re really concentrate on being active defensively and, and crashing the boards offensively. And if he does that, he usually plays pretty well. Then the team returned back January 23rd and had a little break in the schedule from the conference mark. They brought in NAIA William Jessup. And uh, you led by three at the half, and I, I know you weren't a happy camper. Yeah, you know, we played really well offensively. We really did. They started off with a zone. We made shots, shot the ball well from three. I just thought our defense took a night off, and uh, that irritated me because we had talked about um, that whole week and right before the game about us being a really good defensive team. I actually gave them a stat before the game that uh, 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 defensive efficiency were third in the, in the country uh, behind Virginia and Michigan State, and I told them that again. It's Virginia, Michigan State, GCU. Um, so you got to take pride in that. You earned it. You should really wear that. And they did the opposite. So it kind of upset me. I thought we played really well offensively, but that kind of effort defensively. And you got to give a lot of, a lot of credit to, to, to William and Jessup. They, they played well, but uh, defensively, we took a night off. And Laver again, a third straight 20 plus performance. Yeah, like I said, he's a talented kid, and we got to start getting him shots. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, he's a freshman working through some things. Uh, we were trying to go to Josh and other people, and we'll still try to go to Josh, but uh, Ollie's proven to be a pretty good scorer down there, so uh, we got to give him as many shots as we can. What have you seen from him as far Just as Just his game? work ethic. Um, I knew that right one from where I met him. Uh, you know, the difference between him and Rob right now, and Rob's getting better, is, is Ollie really comes to practice every day. He, he works after practice, he works before practice. Uh, he really wants to be good. Not that Rob doesn't, Rob is starting to figure that out, but I saw that work ethic right away. So I thought that Ollie had a chance to be really good if he kept on putting that kind of work and starting to show. Casey Benson had 10 assists in the game. Is it a, a great asset to have him maybe just concentrate on? on no, I want, I want him to concentrate on playing basketball. You know, he's, he's a, a player that's played all over the world. He's been on great teams at Oregon. Uh, I'm not telling him to shoot. I'm not telling him to pass. I'm telling him to play basketball. Um, and he's got to figure it out, whether that's getting 10 assists or, or getting six shots or 12 shots. Uh, I think he turns down some wide open shots sometimes, and that doesn't help anybody. So I don't say, you know, just facilitate. No, you know, play basketball. You're a point guard. It's, well, it's one wherever you went. So if it causes for you to shoot when you're open, shoot, uh, or find the guys that we need to find. 
Recently now, you dropped one at Utah Valley, 68-56 in the game. You were up 14-2 to early on, about 10 minutes. They only had two points well, I and mean, then they stormed back. Yeah, we played well enough defensively to win. I mean, it wasn't a great defensive game, but we held them to 42% shooting and they scored 68 points. I mean, this is a team that averaged 80 and 49%. Uh, so if you can go to their home floor and hold them to 68 and hold them to 42%, that's pretty good mm -hmm. defensively. Problem is we didn't score. Again, Ali had a good game. We missed numerous layups. That was uh, amazing. Yeah. Ten straight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Josh uh, had one point. I thought uh, some of the foul calls on him were absolutely brutal. Uh, we sent him into the league. Uh, and I think some of the other fouls were bad. Um, it's just irritating when you try to play a certain way and you can't play that way. But uh, they got the job done, and offensively, we just weren't good enough. And then the turnovers, they're always a big factor in, in the game. 16 turnovers, they had 21 points. Yeah, turnovers were big, and foul line was big. I mean, for us to turn the ball over that much and for them to have 21 points off those turnovers, and then I think we shot like 13 free throws, and they shot 33. So. I mean, you know, we, we we made more baskets than they did. I think we made more threes than they did. But, I mean, you can't overcome uh, 30, 33 three throws to, to our 13 and the turnovers. All right, we're just getting started. We'll have more of the Dan Marley Show after we take this time out. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Alessandro Laver of the GCU men's basketball team. And, you know, we talked with Roberts uh, a week or so ago, talked about basketball and how – how were you introduced to Grand Canyon University? How were you contacted, or what were your initial thoughts about Grand Canyon? Uh, when I got here on visit, was I feel I was like in the right place. It's an amazing place, I've, and now I feel like this is my second home. This is really my second home. Like I found another family here. You hear that from a lot of students when they come on campus. There's, yeah. a, there's something that's, different that's, here. That's, that's it's right. really hard that's to really kind right, of describe, yeah. but. People just feel really comfortable when they're on campus. There's a there's an energy on campus, so you get that not only with your teammates but the rest of the campus. Uh, like everybody's friendly. friendly. It's like all GCU is like my second house. Yeah. My second home is really an amazing place. Okay, well, I, you know, I got on social media. I was looking at Bolzano, Italy, a hometown. This is a beautiful spot. If you're thinking about a vacation spot, this is right in the Italian Alps. It's beautiful. There's mountains. It, the by mountains, temperature yeah. is like the high about 84 in the summer, 40, 40 degrees in the winter. This is a beautiful part of the world that you came from. <laughs> How are you exposed to basketball in that area? Uh, basketball is not a main sport over yeah, there. Yeah, There's so. hockey, soccer, volleyball, handball, all the kind of small sports. And after we got, um, not soccer, of course, and we got like basketball is like, like fifth or sixth sport over there. So what, were you this tall and you said, well, I, I should uh, play basketball? My, my mother was a basketball player. Oh, and okay. My father was a coach. So, and my father was, uh, sorry, my grandfather was one of the fun dates of our, when I, well, my team when I was playing. So I actually just started playing the team until I moved to Reggio Emilia and after I came here. Wow. How is the game, you know, you played at the under-18 team there, national mm -hmm. team. How is the game in, Ital in Italy different than the college basketball here in America? More in Europe. In Europe, it's less athletic. You run and you jump more here, and we are more tactical game. Is it physica physical? Phys is it's still physical, yeah. They're, they allow more contest than here. Here they call more fouls. Robert said that just the, the flow of the game, the speed of the game, the pace of the game is definitely stepped up here. Yeah, here, yeah. Here is more, like I said, more fighting, more fast, and you don't have so much time to think about the game. Just like act, just run, and jump, box out. You know, we it's we see you, Ali, on the court, and you know, there's there's a there's a mentality, there's a, a fire, you know, or in the way, way that you play. Have you always had that? You mean like Paul? Oh, you get, it looks everything. like you're frustrated. Yeah, just, like what? what yeah, who could, how, why could you? You didn't even. How could that be a foul it, on it me? It doesn't. It doesn't really matter if I'm like up by thirty or down. Just always because it's like part of my game. They did tell me I've stopped doing it. There's a stop for a couple of games. Yeah. But in practice, sometimes I need it. I just feel like I gotta say something. <laughs> I don't know why. Have you felt? Like you've been getting more and more comfortable as yeah, the getting, season I'm has progressed. I mean, you've been yeah. on a stretch now. You're averaging about 24 points a game the last four games. Um, getting more com comfortable, also because Coach Meyer asked ask the team to pass the ball inside and try to pass the ball to the big guys. So, mm -hmm. is it a lot of times too where you talked about matchups? You know, you and KC a little bit of a smaller lineup. You can take yeah. advantage of somebody down in the low post with mm -hmm. your size. Keep feeding your ball. Yeah, that's that's what he was asking us. The last like four minutes of the game, he said, pass the ball inside. 
with trying to win the game like this. How this difficult, game. I'm sorry, how difficult is it from a, as is basketball kind of a universal language? Is the terminology something that's, that's different? Is the feel, that sort of thing? How difficult is it knowing that it's a completely different culture here uh, as well? The communication, I mean, with Roberts no, too and, and... The communication is more or less the same because back in Italy I was playing for a, like, a professional team. I wasn't pro, so they just speak in English, so the terminology is the same. Okay. I just, I just improving my English, and actually, it's just the kind of basketball is different. It's sometimes difficult to yeah. to remember your freshman. Yeah. Or, <laughs> why? Why? Sorry. Why? No, I mean your your game. I mean, oh. you know, you're leading the team, you know, 24 points in the last four games. You you seem to be excelling here at, a, at an early stage where it takes some freshmen a little bit longer. And you talk about their sophomore and junior years really coming together in their game. Where do you want to be when, when you leave GCU and, and what are some areas that you really want to improve on? Um, you want to get bigger? You want to get stronger? I've improved a lot my, my speed, my athleticism, my, my body. And I think this is like the, the main things I have to improve about my, my, my get basketball. I asked Roberts this question too, the food. I mean, I, I would imagine in Italy there's uh, some great food. You come over here. What what is your favorite maybe fast food that you like or what, what what's your go to American American food? Uh, most of the time, it's pretty bad actually. I mean, right. I can it's like say it's like burgers, In and Out, and In and Out, yeah. like Red Robin. Whoa, or Red Robin! <laughs> you gotta love that. In and Out, pretty, double double. Pretty, yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, thank you so much and good luck. Thank you. All right, Alessandro Laver joining us. Stay with us. More of the Dan Marley Show coming your way after these commercial messages. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. The GCU Championship Golf Course underwent a recent course redesign, complete redesign at the course, a new restaurant and clubhouse. The director of golf at GCU, Jesse Mueller, talks about the overwhelming success the golf course is having, as well as his continuation of his pro career, which is highlighted by his upcoming appearance at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. We closed the golf course in 2015 and we uh, hired John Foe to design a lot of great golf courses in the country to redesign the course. So we closed for the year and uh, we added about 600 yards. We redid the tee boxes, the green complexes, the bunkers, uh, added some undulation. We upgraded the grass and the greens and the fairways and then we opened January 1st, 2016. So it's been good. We've had a lot of good feedback. We've hosted a lot of Great event so far from the men's and women's tournament to the Arizona Amateur and uh, we've had a lot of good feedback from everyday golfers and for high skilled golfers as well. It's been great to be able to be the general manager here at the golf course. Through the construction process, the transformation from what it was to what it is now, it had great bones to begin with and then just the upgrades that GCU put into it has turned it into a great place for everyday golfers and for very competitive golfers as well and being able to work with the team that I have here at GCU Golf Course, as well as the students that we have, helping out the men's golf team, being able to be with them at practice, and I'm always available for them to ask for help, so I have a lot of the golfers that come and ask me to look at their swing or just to talk about my experiences playing college golf and professional golf. I feel that I have a lot to add because I've been there. I've uh, been playing competitive golf for, I don't know, 15, 20 years now, so I've had a lot of tournament experience that I feel that I can share with them. So it's been great being able to work uh, with, with the guys on the team. I do miss it a little bit, so if there's a tournament here and there that I get a chance to play in, I'll, I'll try to be able to, I'll try to get into that event and play. I should have time throughout the year to play in a few, so and I, as long as I can still compete on a decently high level, I'll continue to play once in a while. I joined the section last summer, the Southwest section PGA, and that was my first section championship was in September. So that was, uh, I just joined, then I was able to compete in the section championship just a few months later. And to be able to win it, uh, we have a lot of good players in the section. So it was, uh, I, I played great. And then obviously it gets me into the waste management here in a couple of weeks. So I'm really looking forward to that. Growing up in Phoenix, uh, attending the tournament many times and playing professional golf for 10, 12 years and just not being able to get into it, being close a couple times. Just to be able to play in front of all my family and friends and all the, every, the GCU family is going to be uh, looking forward to it. 
be my third PJ Tour event. I played in the US Open 2012, and I played in the PJ Tour event about a month ago in Las Vegas. So that was a nice, I guess, preparation or nice experience to get before the waste management. So I, I feel comfortable playing out there. So uh, I, I look forward to, I, I'll, I'll be, it's being Phoenix, so I've played the golf course. I've been out there a few times in the last couple of months. So I know it's wild. Uh, I haven't been out there in a couple of years, but I, I know the atmosphere and it's gonna be, the US Open had big crowds, but nothing like this. So it's something that we'll just see what happens. All I can do is try to hit the best shot I can and hope for the best. If you're fortunate enough to head out to the Waste Management Phoenix Open this weekend, remember to follow Jesse Mueller as he hits the links, or you can follow his progress at gculopes.com. We'll be right back with more of the Dan Marley Show as we continue after this timeout. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Buttel alongside the head coach of the GCU men's volleyball team in his second season, Matt Worley. So glad you could join us today, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, why not join us? So you guys are off to an eight and two start, the best start in program history. You guys are on a roll to begin the year. Talk about the early successes. Yeah, so far so good. You know, our two losses come to Hawaii. Um, you know, they're a top five program and then UC Irvine as well. I mean, those are the two losses that we had early, but I was a little disappointed with our performance against Hawaii. We lost in three set scores. I think were 25, 20, 21, and 20. But at home against Irvine, we lost 15, 13. I thought that was a really big missed opportunity for us. Uh, I actually had the lead 11, 10 in the fifth set. Uh, a couple bad decisions that you know cost us that match. But it's also everything that we do is a learning experience for us. So I think the guys are holding on to that one, knowing what we're capable of doing at this point, and kind of that left a bad taste in their mouth. And now they want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Second season for you. You got a top ranked program right now. How were you able to be successful in, in really making your mark with this team? You know, I'm lucky to have, well, it's a blessing and a curse, but I have nine seniors on our roster right now, which is about half of our roster. So their on court experience helps big time. So I've been able to kind of focus on some of the younger guys and developing them. But, you know, with, with the nine seniors, I mean, there's a ton of leadership that's spread. Each of them have different roles in that regard, but, you know, they've just, they've been there. They've been there, they know what we're capable of doing now, and you know, we have enough bodies with the experience that we can rely on multiple guys in a given night, which is great for me. You mentioned you've been there, and you have been there, MIVA Championship. You know about the experience, this team knows about the experience. Mm -hmm. How's that taste and setting in everybody's mouth? And knowing that you know the journey, that's yeah, it's, help. it's exciting. And you know, even taking that back to last year when we lost to Ohio State, you know, they ended up being the national champions mm -hmm. this past year. And the second set there, I mean, we lost the first one. It wasn't it wasn't too close, but we had a chance to win that second set. And if that set goes our way, you never know where the season could have ended up. But I think we just kind of ran out of gas when they took that second set from us this past year. And now moving forward, I mean, we don't have them on our schedule this year, but we're still playing, like I said, top ten teams, and we should be at that you know, 10 marker right now, actually. So we'll kind of just keep progressing forward and forward and keep growing. I think we're nowhere near our potential right now for this year. Transition from MIVA now to the uh, Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. What's that transition like? What's the competition like? You know, it's it's different. I think top to bottom, the Mountain Pacific is uh, definitely stronger. Um, it's going to be interesting to have universities like UCLA, Stanford, BYU that have this, you know, historical success of men's volleyball in Antelope Gym for the first time. Those schools have never been on our campus. So it's gonna be fun to have them here and they, they're gonna be up for a little rude awakening when they, the Havocs get, get going. You made a transition to here at Antelope Gymnasium. I mean, the place is packed and it gets loud. Talk yeah. about the environment here. It's like none other. You know, it's, it's not Hawaii where they average, you know, 4,500 to 5,000 a match. And, you know, men's volleyball in Hawaii is just something that everyone will go see. You know, when you get, I think we had 1,400 here for our Irvine match, it's loud. You know, for a coach, it's, it's good and bad. You know, everything that kind of goes with it, like it's tough. It's a tough environment for the guys to play in as opponents coming in here. Um, but our guys just thrive on it with the DJ, you know, the cheerleaders get after it. Uh, the bands, you know, involved as well. It's it's pretty pretty special here. It's uh, pretty special. Let's talk about your senior laden team. Talk about some of the players that are leading the way. Sure, sure. So we actually have two senior setters, uh, both Puna Kaniho and Zach Melcher. Uh, they're kind of split in time right now, which is just. It's a personality switch. So Zach is very uh, high energy and kind of gets the guys riled up. Puna's a little bit more mild, I think delivers the ball smoother at times. Um, so depending on who we're playing in a given night, we kind of can mix that up. Um, other seniors, we have Shalev Sada on the outside, Luke Turner, Cody Williams, Cullen Mosier. That's a lot of guys on the court for us Keeps that you know have the experience. So 
they're supporting one another. You know, we have the fact that we're old, we have some nagging injuries, mm -hmm. so we can give guys old. a break when we need to. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have a guy that's 25. Well, a 25 year old, you know. Yeah, it's over the in, hill. In, <laughs> in college is, <laughs> is something you don't see a whole lot. No, you but, you're right. you know, these guys, are, these guys are good and they support each other and we're starting to actually come off the court in timeouts and they kind of pull each other aside if they're on the court or not and give some advice before we chime in as coaches. So the support system's there. Talk a little bit about uh, the, the schedule coming up because you begin MPSF play at home against number 12 Pepperdine yep. on the 8th of February, number two UCLA mm -hmm. on the 10th right here at Antelope Gymnasium. Come on out. It's free. It's great. The great atmosphere. But man, these are some pretty, yeah, pretty yeah, it's prominent a, opponents. It, yeah, and there's some coaches actually in this conference. You know, UCLA's coach is the men's national team coach. Like, I mean, he's been to Olympics. Um, so it's going to be interesting to be across the court from him being so young. I don't want to say inexperienced, but young into the Division One coaching realm. Um, but John Spra at UCLA, he's fantastic. Pepperdine, you know, they just retired a coach that had so many national championships, Marv Dunphy, um, and his, I guess, mentee below him just moved into that position. So there's going to be, it's going to be pretty special here. And I can't even describe it because, I mean, I think you really need to kind of be there to see what it's all about. Question I didn't ask probably off the top was what what are your expectations? You talk about moving up in the rankings, but where do you want this team to be at the end? To compete for a championship? Yeah, you you know, we talked we talked Saturday night after our match here um, about believing and trusting in the system and the process to get where we want to be for that end result. And you know we believe in the guys as a staff that we can be national champions this year. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that they see what we're actually capable of and then still putting the work in every morning for practice. Well, continued success to you, your staff, and these uh, players. Thank you, thank you. All right. Matt Worley, the head coach of the GCU men's volleyball team. Stay with us. We'll have more of the Dan Marley Show after we take this time out. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Back for our final segment to talk about some upcoming games. As of Later on this week, you've got UMKC. You talked about them in their opening segment of the show. A little bit of a smaller lineup. They don't mind throwing some guards out there. Uh, they'll throw a lot of guards out there. We have to be ready for small ball. we got to guard their guys one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we have to do a good job of that. And again, uh, on the offensive end, continue to look to post up. I'm sure we'll be ready for that and have different uh, uh, looks for us defensively. But again, on our home floor, I guess the team that we beat there, uh, we got to come out and take care of business. Chicago State comes in on Saturday night. You had a big win up there at, at the uh, Chicago State. Uh, on yeah, that road again, trip. it's a team that we beat uh, on the road, and uh, we got to come home and and as I said, be really business-like, work-like, and try to get back onto a roll and uh, uh, play well at home and uh, just do what we're supposed to do. We'll, we'll, we'll find a lot of different matchups in that game. They'll play a lot of different zones, a lot of different other things. So we just got to stay true to what we're doing. And then back on the road, UTRGV, and then the rematch in Las Cruces against the Aggies. Yeah, URTGV is going to be good. They're yeah. going to be hard to, hard to beat there. Uh, they're, they're a much improved team this year. Uh, so that'll be a really uh, good matchup for us. And then obviously New Mexico State who uh, beat us uh, here. I didn't think we played very well. Uh, they played well. Uh, they've been playing well all year. So that's going to be a, a daunting task, obviously, for us. But uh, I think our guys are looking forward to it. But we have so much to take care of before we get to to uh, New Mexico State, but uh, I am looking forward to that game because I want to see how our guys step up. Yeah, I mean, you guys were tied at the half. You, you yeah, we played bad. And, yeah, we played yeah. bad. We, you know, when you get rebound, rebounded by 25 and uh, don't shoot the ball well and have it 50-50 with like six minutes to go or whatever. But as I said, they're they're really good. So uh, we'll just have to play one of our best games to be able to beat them. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, thanks to you as well for tuning in to the Dan Marley Show.